first question is who's the main character? In Matthew, it's very clear to me that the main character is Joseph. We're seeing everything from his perspective. Um, it's overall a more male-centric story. Um, and Luke, it seems very obvious to me that the main character is Mary. Um, it's a more female-centric story. You know, we've got Mary, we've got Elizabeth, um, and you know, those are those are kind of who we're who we're focusing on. Um, in Matthew, as I already talked about, God always communicates with people via dreams. Um, and Luke, he always communicates with them by the physical appearance of angels. Um, and again, that's interesting because if you merge them together, you, you miss that. <laughs> you miss that they're both doing something different. Um, how do they fix the Bethlehem Nazareth problem, right? Like, because both of them are dealing with this issue. We've got this guy from Nazareth, but he was supposed to have been born in, Ma in Bethlehem. In Matthew, um, he introduces the Herod's plot to kill the innocents, which sends the family from Bethlehem to Nazareth. In Luke, we have the census which sends the family from Nazareth to Bethlehem and then back to Nazareth. And you know, neither of them has the census or the, or the plot to kill the innocents. They both have just that thing. Mm -hmm. The tone, <laughs> the tone. Okay, let's, clarify why that's important. let's clarify why that's important. Yes, uh, go ahead. Again, in the first century, and these ideas are, remember, the idea of Messiah was evolving a lot in, in you know, it, it's yeah. based on interpretations over centuries that, uh, that Jewish communities had during the, the, the temple, post-temple, and they, they change, right? At this time period, there's people, a lot of Jews were expecting two messiahs, the messiahs, you know, mm -hmm. son of Joseph, messiah, son of David. So there's a lot of ideas in this time frame, but the messiah, son of David, was believed to be um, the, you know, they interpreted uh, certain prophecies from the Hebrew Bible, from the prophets about that the, the, the Davidic kingdom would last forever. Well, it hasn't lasted forever because uh, the the uh, mm -hmm. Babylonians destroyed it, right? And essentially put in client leaders, right? And so the so if there are any descendants of David, they're all quite quietly hiding if they're even around, right? Because they're basically a threat to you know first the Babylonians, then the Persians, then the Greeks, and then the Romans, and mm -hmm. they're they're like they're like Aragorn, like the hidden king, right? So there's no, <laughs> you know, these guys are client leaders that are being installed by the imperial states that rule this area for the next four. 500 years, right? And so so it's in, at this point, the idea of a kingdom going back to the great kingdom of David and Solomon is very important to a people that have not been independent for 500 years, right? And so this, mm -hmm. it, and now you've got these gospels who are claiming that Jesus is that Messiah as understood in the time frame of the first century. Well, he's got to, and there, there, there is you know, this idea, well, if he's Messiah, well, David was from Bethlehem. That's where he was born. So the Messiah is going to come from Bethlehem. And the problem is that all of the textual accounts that we have refer to Jesus of Nazareth, right? Uh, of, Gal of Galilee, of Galilee. He's Jesus the Galilean. Um, throughout the Gospels, people ain't talking much about him being Jesus the dude from Be Bethlehem. They ain't. They're talking him as Jesus the Galilean. His disciples are all Galilean. And that's to the north. That's, that's essentially another country. Right. It's another it's another country. And, uh, you know, and it's a country that had a lot of Gentiles. So a lot of Jews from the south thought that I don't know how religious these people are. I don't know if they're really Jews. So suddenly Jew, Jesus is, are you really Jewish? You're from Galilee, which is a very Gentile area. Right. And uh, and so he's got to deal with that. And people say, well, you're from Galilee. How could you be the Messiah as we are? The Messiah's got to come from Bethlehem. So stories have to deal with that. They have to make him from Bethlehem. Doesn't mean he's not from Bethlehem. But I'm saying the story has to address it. Because exactly, people were saying, exactly. do from Galilee. So the story has to address it. Yes, yes. Um, and then tone, of course, <laughs> they have very different tones. Matthew is a lot darker. It's serious. Um, we deal with issues like betrayal and murder. Mary's mm -hmm. integrity, integrity is threatened, right? Like we talk about thinking that, you know, she has, um, uh, you know, had sex <laughs> at a young age, you know, all these things. Um, people's lives are at stake, innocents die. I mean, it's, there's a lot of serious stuff that happens in Matthew's mm -hmm. account. Um, and Luke, it's like light and fluffy. <laughs> it's very, I wrote, it's like a, a happy, feel good story with nothing but sunshine and rainbows. Um, yeah. So what, can, we, can we stop for a second and look at the comparison Luke. of what I just set up, right? Look here at who is Matthew talking to? Matthew is mm -hmm. talking to a group of persecuted minority Jews who are essentially becoming a new religion that other Jews aren't accepting as Jews anymore, right? Mm -hmm. So that's a dark situation to be in. Right. So murder, betrayal, murder, you know, accusations of insinuations like Mary, you know, you, you know, did you get pregnant outside of marriage? And is this a sinful thing? You know, these people are being accused by their neighbors as being outside the community, as being sinful. So, and they're 
they're isolated, they're alone. The Roman Empire is crushing anybody that's calling themselves Jewish. So, like, should we be calling ourselves Jewish when that could get us killed? This is a bad situation for the for the Matthew communities that we that most historians think are in in Palestine and in what is now modern Lebanon. That's where they were. That's where they were living. And this is a bad situation for those people. Their local Jews don't like them, and the Romans are killing everybody that's a, that says they're Jewish, right? So, and now these dudes also claim to be Jewish with their own king. That's a big problem. So they're in a very bad situation. Luke is in a different situation because his people largely ain't in Palestine. They're mostly in Turkey, in Turkey. And, uh, you know, that's where a lot of this is. Why Turkey? Because Byzantium was the center of the empire, right? Or at least, you know, I'm sorry, Byzantium didn't exist at the time. But the power, political power was a Greek speaking uh, uh, people that would evolve into Byzantium, but Greek speaking Romans. Turkey was the center of that power, right? Ephesus and all these places. That's where Paul spent a lot of his time in Turkey, not in Italy, right? And so, these people are scattered. You know, Luke's got all these people that don't care what's happening in, in the Holy Land, got nothing to do with them. They don't got soldiers breathing down their neck and they're not Jewish. So nobody's hassling them for being Jewish at a time of rebellion. Right. And so this is a message of hope. All of you come join this thing. This is a yeah. better religion than your materialistic worldview of your time. Let's give you happy, positive energy. Different communities dealing with a different situation. That leads so perfectly into the next thing I have in here, which is the theme, at least as I as I took it out, I'd be curious to see if, if you think yeah. this is accurate. But to me, I was seeing the theme in Matthew's account to be like when things are difficult and confusing, trust in God. It felt like a story Perfect. providing encouragement and hope in the darkness. Um, the theme of Luke is like, God is good. Have faith and belief for miracles do happen. And it's like all hope and without the without the darkness. That, that fits exactly like what you were describing, like mm -hmm. what these two communities need. Yeah, makes sense. So, see, it's perfect. I mean, again, none of this is denying the truth of any of this or the or the sincerity of the people who wrote this. What it is is they're writing for their audience, and yeah. they're focusing and on stories that are, they are the audience. Luke's audience doesn't want to hear a depressing story. They ain't depressed. They got no reason to be depressed. And and Matthew's audience ain't here for happy go lucky story when their lives are at stake. Yeah, and there's also some some scholars think that that these these two writers probably weren't on this story. Were not aware of each other's writing because they have so little in common. Like there are some stories like in all the gospels where it's clear that yeah. people were referencing each other or they're referencing another source. Cause like things are so similar to the point where it's like the same words are being used. And here it's, it's, it's quite possible that these two, you know, these two writers, like they, they were hearing different stories and they just wrote down what they heard. Um, and, and then, you know, of course we're, we're writing it in a way to, to, to uh, accomplish whatever their goals were. Um, but yeah, um, and then the last thing I put here was of talking about the roles of the characters in both of these stories. So in Matthew, um, there's a, we're drawing a similarity between the trust and obedience of both Joseph and the Magi. So these are both these male heroes that positively embody that theme of you know trusting God when things are difficult um, and just and just obey what He says. Um, there are clear good guys and there's a villain. <laughs> um, yep. Joseph, the main character, he 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 seems to fulfill this sort of archetypal good father and husband. You know, he's leading his family through difficult times and danger, um, and so you know he's 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 that leader kind of a role. Um, there's a lot of responsibility on him. Meanwhile, over at Luke, <laughs> we're contrasting, like I was talking about earlier, the faith of Mary um, with the doubt of Zechariah. Um, and so both of those characters, they have questions about that coming miracle, but they ask it in kind of a different spirit. And I think we're supposed to note the difference between how they ask those questions, because the story, I don't think is trying to say you should never question God, but it's like you should still, you know, have faith, I guess. Um, OK, so, so let's look at this. Let's look yeah. at this, Brianna. What you just said, it's really wonderful. So why does Matthew need a villain? Right. Because we've, you've got Herod. Right. You got Herod. Right. Well, because these people are being his community is facing imperial onslaught and and pressure from uh, Jewish political authorities of the time, or religious authorities. Political authority have been shattered by this time, right? So Jewish religious authorities who are defining them as not Jewish anymore, right? So authority is a problem for these people, right? Mm -hmm. Being killed by people in authority is a problem for these people. And so this story, you know, when they're seeing themselves being persecuted by their fellow Jews and by the Romans, a story of Herod killing all these people and them having to flee. I'm sure a lot of these people have to flee. Uh, we actually know that the follower, and we're going to get to him, he's an interesting character, James, the brother of Jesus, uh, the Jewish Christians that were mentioned that were that were essentially Jews that believed Jesus was the promised king, but they were theologically essentially Jews, the same idea. The, the Christian ideas hadn't weren't part of their community. And so they were led by James, and we know they fled when the temple, James was killed by the high priest. Hmm. James was killed by the high priest. Right. And he was a he was actually a well-respected figure in the Jewish community 
of non-Christian Jews. So when he was killed, that was the breaking point because the the fig that was the the guy that was the bridge that made the Jews go. This guy, okay, this guy's a religious Jew, so these these Nazarenes can't be heretics, right? We may not agree with their teacher being the Messiah, but they're not heretics. He's killed by the high priest, right? Jewish mm -hmm. political authority like Herod. Herod is actually Jewish, right? He may not be a good Jew, but that's what he is, right? And so, and neither is uh, arguably the high priest is not a good Jew either, but you know he's just a political appointee like Herod was, and so or at least. Like, you know, Herod was at least a client. Uh, and so you got, and then they fled to what is now modern Jordan, uh, to Pella. We know because there's all this archaeological work being done about the Jewish Christian community that settled in Pella for centuries, and they had to flee. So this idea of Mary and Joseph, all this stuff having to flee, direct problem for the, 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 the Matthew, gospel Matthew readers. Now we look at the role of the characters here that you've put out here, Brianna, brilliantly. It's wonderful you've done these charts. So what is the issue here? So you've, the way the Zechariah story, which is also meant in very significantly in the Quran, and it's different, mm -hmm. we'll get to it. But the way yes, it's presented here, it's out. these people aren't getting it. They're, they're resisting it. And as a result, you know, God takes away the voice and all of these things and whatever. And so, mm -hmm. you know, it's almost like they're being punished for not getting it. Like these are people that should get it. Zachariah is a priest. God's speaking to him, sending him angels. You know, Elizabeth. How much progress you know, does it get in a literal angel, right? <laughs> Elizabeth isn't getting it. She's getting a miracle. She's not getting it. And uh, and Mary's getting it. So what mm -hmm. does that tell us? These, the audience of Luke are non-Jewish people who are probably, and by the way, Judaism exists, especially in Turkey in these areas where Luke is popular, right? And there's synagogues there. And these are people already saying this. What do you, what are you following this Jesus thing? That's not Judaism. That isn't real, right? They're already hearing that by 70, 80, 90 AD. They're hearing it from their neighbors. And so mm -hmm. the response is, well, these guys don't get it. So, you know, the people in the synagogue who are, because people are like, why? Well, the Jews are telling you this isn't Jewish. So why are you believing it? Well, they didn't get it. They didn't get the message. They didn't get the message because, you know, their, their hearts weren't fully open or they didn't have full faith. So suddenly Zechariah and Elizabeth serve that purpose of symbolizing that when you, and so you're like well we don't these guys just didn't get it but we got it so i'm sorry you didn't get it mary got it and we're following her so mm -hmm. do you see the difference in the, the why they have to be this way for the audience problem yes yes that is so cool to know and, and also that this luke's doesn't have any villain <laughs> like there's no there's no bad guy it's just but there is the you know the cautionary character zechariah but he's only like lightly cautionary you know like he's overall a righteous man but he makes a minor mistake by doubting miracle and he's kind of lightly chastised right like he's his voice is taken away and then he's he gets it back <laughs> so the story well, his happens. voice is taken away uh, which actually occurs in the Quran as well but has a different meaning completely different meaning right oh, but awesome. his voice is taken away so let's understand how I'm a reader hearing that so mm -hmm. at this time uh, you know I'm in an Ephesus or somewhere in Turkey and I've got this and I've got Jewish people who are politically disempowered because the Romans are coming after them, right? Uh, and uh, but they're still citizens of the state; and they're there, right? You know, they don't have a voice in the po politics of the Roman Empire right now because they're seen mm -hmm. as rebels. They're essentially silenced, and so now since they're not able to really promote their religion much or or anything, suddenly you've got uh, Christians now are the ones that can speak. Mm 